Hello everyone and welcome back to another a very exciting chess game by Capablanca again and in this chess game his opponent is a chess player named Fred Yates uh, who was actually a pretty strong chess player he was the six times chess champion of England uh, he even quit his job for becoming a professional chess player so unfortunately he died pretty young his life ended prematurely uh, because of a, a gas pipe, uh, because of a gas leak, uh, which caused his death during his sleep. So that's very unfortunate. He was 48 years old. And as I said, uh, he was the six times chess champion of England. And this very beautiful chess game happened in Carlsbad chess tournament. Uh, Carlsbad is a city in Czechoslovakia. So uh, this is actually the picture of this very famous and one of the probably the strongest tournament at that year, Carlsbad Chess Tournament from 1929. So 22 of the best chess players at that time competed in that tournament. So you can you can even see Vera Manchik, who was the first ever women's world chess champion. So you can see her at the bottom left. So she was the best woman chess player at that time. Uh, unfortunately, she didn't do very well in the tournament. She finished the tournament at the final place. Uh, so we can say that maybe she was not as strong as the woman chess grandmasters of today. So 22 of, of the best players of that era competed in this massive chess tournament and Aaron Nimzovic, all credits to him, he won the tournament. And Capablanca uh, was at the second place. Uh, with only uh, half points, he has managed to uh, score the first place, Aaron Nimzovic. And also, uh, I should not forget to tell you that two of the other uh, greatest chess players of that time, and of all times actually, both Emmanuel Lesker and Alexander Alehin was also absent in that tournament. So this picture, in my opinion, is a very high quality, as you can see, and an amazing picture of the of this tournament. We can we can even see Vera Manchik uh, at the left bottom, and Capablanca, of course. Akiba Rubinstein uh, is on the right bottom. Uh, he's the second gentleman at the right. So. I think we can even see some of the organizers of the tournament because there is more than 22 individuals in this picture. Okay, anyway, so this is some of the interesting informations about the Carlsbad chess tournament. So maybe we will check out some other chess games of this tournament, but today let's check out what happened between Jose Roll Capablanca and against the six times England, a uh, chess champion of England, Fred Yates. So Capablanca, who had the white pieces, starts the game with d4, we have knight to f6, and then c4, e6, and we have the queen's gambit declined, bishop to e7, e3, and black castled. Developing the knights, nothing interesting so far. So we have a typical queen's gambit declined position, uh, now capturing the pawn, uh, forcing the bishop move again and then pushing the pawn bishop to d3 a6 and capablanca castled c5 a4 by jose roll capablanca fighting from the queen side pushing the pawn kicking the bishop back and if you press your opponent and if you push the b pawn then a uh, white is going to play knight to e4 and if knight takes knight then bishop takes also attacking the rook there is no time for capturing the bishop so the c pawn is looking very weak so at the end of the day white is going to collect this pawn so there is no need to be too aggressive in this position we have queen to b6 and then capablanca played e4 charging from the center h6 asking a question uh, Capablanca played bishop to e3, aggressively placing the bishop on e3 and planning to push the pawn, maybe discover attacking the queen. So attacking the bishop, knight to g4, and Capablanca 
it's still moving the bishop, bishop to f4 and bishop to b7, a natural looking move, developing the bishop. So Capablanca played a very important move in this position, he played e5. Now fixing the e-pawn and also can you see what's wrong with black's position, what is the problem? Actually it looks like black is doing fine but in this position actually this knight is looking so uh, dangerously placed on g4 because black can get trapped, I mean the knight can get trapped after pushing the pawn. So with pushing the pawn Capablanca is advancing, both fixing the e-pawn and also controlling the only safe spot of the knight f6. So this looks very dangerous. But Fred Yates played pushing the pawn, so he has a plan, of course, it is not that simple. And Capablanca played, of course, the most obvious move, he played h3, so attacking the knight, and the knight is trapped. But in this position, Fred Yates played rook to f7, he wants to double the rooks. And actually, capturing the knight is not a good idea in this position, and Capablanca played the top engine move. In this position, what would you do? Actually, white has a very strong move. And that is d5 by Jose Raul Capablanca. And with this move, actually, white has a very dangerous threat. And avoiding that threat is not easy. But before showing that, actually, what happens if capturing the knight? So Capablanca pushed to d pawn in the real game. But if capturing the knight, then capturing back and discover attacking the bishop and also attacking the knight. So if defending the bishop, then simply capturing the knight and black is better and also defending the f-pawn with the bishop. So black is better actually in this position. So rook to f7 and d5 by Capablanca. Can you see the main threat in this position? Uh, what is the threat for white? Uh, what white is threatening here? Well, Yates played b4, advancing and attacking the knight. And it is white to move, so can you see what white can play here? Actually, after pushing the d-pawn to d5, defending is not easy. And white has a very strong move in this position. So if I give you uh, 3 seconds, can you guess the next move? which Capablanca didn't miss. If you want, you can also pause the video and try to guess the move. So your time is starting from now. Okay, so this is what Capablanca did. A5, attacking the queen. So in this position, actually the question is this. After capturing the pawn, after d takes on e6, forking two pieces, and if it is not for queen, how black is going to defend a uh, forking two pieces, so the queen is the only defender. And in this position, after pushing the pawn, Capablanca is basically deflecting the queen after a5. So queen takes on a5 and Capablanca simply captured d takes on e6. So if capturing the knight, then white is going to take the rook with check and then the knight is going to follow. So defending the rook and now this is also an important moment of the game. What would you do? Of course, uh, so the question is this. Would you capture the knight with the pawn or with the queen? Of course, with the queen, queen is better because after this move, which Capablanca played this move, queen takes on d7 by Capablanca. This is also forking two pieces, so the attack continues. So basically white has the edge, bishop takes on f3 and Capablanca captured back and this knight is trapped. Capturing the knight and then queen takes on e7 by Jose Raul Capablanca. C takes on b2, well in this position if something like g5, black can try this, but then simply capturing the knight, and if capturing the bishop, then bishop takes on f5, and how to defend the checkmate threat. So this is also pretty dangerous. Okay, so in the real chess game, let's check out once again, 
queen takes, not pawn takes, and forking two bishops with the queen. Bishop takes on f3, capturing, and then capturing the knight, but then capturing the bishop, and white is still a piece up, and this knight is trapped. C takes on b2, simply rook takes on c4, attacking the queen, Capablanca played the move, and black resigned. The move is queen to c5 by Jose Raul Capablanca, and Yates resigned. Because in this position, I mean, what else? Simply exchanging, and where is the knight going? White is two pieces up, basically. So, capturing the knight, capturing back, defending the bishop, and white has two extra bishops, and this is all over. This is just simply game over. So, okay, so in this position, actually, this is a little bit complicated, but if a black would try to prevent that, prevent that threat with, with pushing the a-pawn. Then we have d takes on e6, so what else? Queen takes on e6, and then knight to d4 is a very strong move. Queen to g4, but then came knight takes on f5. So with a double threat, attacking the knight and also threatening to take the bishop or move the knight and then win the queen. So this is basically all over. If rook takes knight, I think that is not very good. We can simply capture the rook and then the knight is going to follow. So, uh, what a game by Capablanca. So, let's check out what happened in the game again. He pushed the pawn and then deflect the queen and d takes on e6. After defending the rook, capturing the knight with the queen and then capturing the pawn, uh, capturing the bishop. And as you can see, basically white is winning. After queen to c5, Fred Yates resigned because white is two pieces up. So what do you think about this chess game? I hope you have enjoyed watching this chess game and I hope to see you next time with more entertaining chess games from the chess history. Take care, stay safe and bye bye.